My name is Keith Packard. Uh, I joined Sci-5 in, in July. I actually proposed this talk uh, just before I joined the company. Um, so this is a, something I've been working on for about a year and a half now. Uh, so how many of you uh, do embedded programming with RISC-V processors? How many of you have uh, experienced the delights of the available libc's that we have for RISC-V processors? Yeah, isn't it fun? Uh, so I've been doing embedded programming for about 10 years. Um, I started on 8051s and the late bit Atmel processors um, about 10 years ago. And we moved to ARM processors about six years ago. And I looked around for a C library for my ARM processors. Um, and the only one that I could find was, um, let's see if this is working. The only one that I could find was, uh, was uh, Newlib. Uh, Newlib is not exactly what I wanted. Uh, what do you need from an embedded libc? Not a lot, right? You're doing embedded programming. You probably do a lot of uh, bare metal stuff. But you do need kind of basic uh, C library functionality. You need uh, math functions and string functions. Um, and you need a little bit of standard I.O. I usually use standard I.O. for debug printfs during development. Um, and after the product goes to market, printf is even, may, I might not even need that. Um, so a pretty basic library requirements. Um, I used Newlib for quite a while. Um, so Newlib and Newlib Nano uh, both, both come out of the same source pool. Um, they came from uh, kind of Cygnus uh, software solutions, building, uh, build, building compilers and, and, uh, and development tools for Unix systems in the 90s. Uh, so those, that was really never designed to be an embedded C library. Uh, but when we got to 32-bit processors and embedded systems, uh, there wasn't really anything else out there. And so people have been using Newlib uh, in 32-bit embedded systems for a long time now. Um, it's really not suited for what we need. Um, it's not ever been developed for embedded systems. It's almost all of the work right now is being done by uh, people working on SIGWIN, which is the uh, POSIX on Windows API emulation environment. Um, you can also, there's also a whole, whole range of proprietary libraries you can get out there. Um, they're very difficult for me to support. As a free software developer, I can't fix them, um, and I can't ship them to you in source code form. Um, Newlib has a great, a lot of, uh, um, uh, a, actually a pretty good uh, pedigree in terms of where its core functionality comes from. The math libraries were written by Sun. Um, the the uh, string libraries uh, came in a similar fashion. Uh, really careful engineering, pretty good numerics. Uh, it's actually a pretty good library at that level. Um, but what I've done is I've taken Newlib, uh, the parts that I like, the string functions and the math functions, and I've pulled them out of Newlib. Um, and I've merged them with the, the standard I.O. pieces from the AVR, the 8-bit AVR uh, C library, which is a tiny little uh, uh, POSIX compliant uh, printf and scanf and standard I.O. functionality that instead of taking several kilobytes uh, for printf, takes about 20 bytes of RAM. Uh, so it's d very definitely targeted for tiny embedded systems, much more like what I'm used to using. Um, it's not obviously uh, designed for uh, high performance. So a lot of the functionality in the in the standard I.O. package, um, it all goes through put C and get C, so it's a single character function call interface, which makes it really easy to, uh, to connect to whatever I.O. devices you have, a serial port or uh, uh, semi-hosting debug support, whatever you have, it's really easy to get uh, uh, P uh, the Pico Libc standard I.O. to talk to those. Um, the other thing I did is in uh, Newlib, Newlib was developed before GCC had TLS support. Uh, before the ABIs and modern processors kind of included TLS support as part of their functionality. Uh, certainly before, before RISC-V's amazing TLS support was available. Uh, Newlib actually has its kind of its own thread local storage solution with a global variable pointing at a block in memory that is allocated globally for every thread. Um, it's very inefficient on in our modern world. It doesn't take advantage of any of the, adva uh, any of the things we've done in TLS support in the last 30 years. Uh, so I've actually ripped all that out and replaced it with kind of modern TLS stuff. So instead of using the giant TLS block uh, from Newlib, you actually get integrated TLS support for your application and for the library uh, that your RTOS can take advantage of. And we'll be integrating this TLS support into free RTOS uh, for RISC-V as well. So you get kind of, you actually be able to use TLS uh, th thread local variables uh, in your applications running in free RTOS uh, along with the library. Um, the other thing that I've added for making kind of bring up easier is I've added a, li a little linker script and some, uh, some CRT0, some startup code into the library. So you actually have, uh, the library knows how to start itself up on your platform and knows how to initialize uh, the initialized data and the BSS and get the TLS set up um, and jump into your code. Um, as a result, you can actually build a hello world in a relatively small amount of code. 
Um, and I'll, I've got a, uh, a sample of how that works at the end of this talk. Uh, the other thing that I've added to, uh, to, um, to PicoLibc is semi-hosting. Uh, semi-hosting is, is an interesting technique that's come from a lot of other embedded environments. It allows the application to talk through the debugger or through QEMU or through your other hosting environment to the underlying operating system. That means when you're bringing up your chip, you can use semi-hosting to do input and output, to do file reads and writes. Uh, you can use the semi-hosting stuff under QEMU to tell QEMU, hey, by the way, my application is done. We might want to terminate QEMU, and here's a nice exit status. Um, I've been using that in the last couple of weeks to get the, uh, the new lib test suite up and running on RISC-V. Um, and it means that I can run uh, uh, RISC-V tests with no uh, virtual serial port and no virtual serial port driver. I can run the QEMU, te the QEMU test essentially you know, right on top of QEMU and using the semi-hosting stuff for all of my status outputs and all of my exit codes. Um, and that has been a, a tremendous advantage uh, for getting stuff running. It means that I don't have to have any device drivers uh, other than the semi-hosting drivers in my application. Uh, so the semi-hosting that RISC-V uh, is is, uh, has specified is actually in a, in a fairly recent uh, heart, uh, platform specification for RISC-V. We've adopted the ARM semi-hosting um, API in a lot of ways. It's got all the same calls and the same parameters. Uh, but we use kind of a funky, uh, a funky mechanism to, to trap into the semi-hosting stuff. Um, and I have some questions for the people who wrote that spec uh, that I'll be working over the next couple weeks. Um, I have patches for semi-hosting um, on the way into QEMU. Uh, they're kind of waiting for the 4.2 release to happen before they get merged in. So eventually we'll get semi-hosting in QEMU and then the, the Pico Libc semi-hosting support will be there as well. Um, I imagine it'll be fairly easy to get semi-hosting support available in other C libraries. The standard is, is widely available. And once the, Pico, the, once the QEMU support is there, then those will work as well. But the nice thing about getting semi-hosting into your C library underneath your C library is that now you can just run regular C applications, uh, tell it that it's running under semi-hosting, and then the semi-hosting syscall API is available and the library can use that uh, to get at the underlying system. Let's see. Okay, uh, so Newlib, how many of you knew that Newlib actually has about 74,000 test cases? It's shipped with the code, it's been there for 30 years. Um, I'm reasonably confident that they have not been run in over 20 years. Um, the the uh, new lib test pr uh, release process right now is literally to snapshot the tree on, on uh, New Year's Eve uh, and, and ship the code. I don't think they do any integrated system testing of any kind. I certainly haven't found any, uh, any evidence of that. But they are reasonably, it's a reasonably comprehensive test suite for both the math functions and the string functions, which are the two main parts of the C library that I care most about. Um, and uh, I, I have spent the last couple of weeks kind of uh, ta uh, duct, taking, duct taping them back together and kind of getting them running again. And I'm actually happy to announce that uh, as of about an hour ago, I actually have all 74,000 test cases running successfully under QEMU on RISC-V. So we actually, I've fixed about probably a dozen bugs in the library and about 20,000 test cases that were broken in the test suite. Um, so we now actually have a test suite for our C library. Um, I'm planning on taking the test fixes that I've made and the library fixes that I've made and uh, upstreaming those to Newlib. So if you're using Newlib, you'll be able to get testing on Newlib as well. Uh, so because the code bases for those are, are shared. Um, so the, uh, the other thing is that the way that I'm building Pico Libc right now is I build it for, in risk, in, on RISC-V today, I'm building it for 31 different uh, architecture combinations. So all those little flags you see in the RISC-V uh, processor, uh, so whether it's E mode or I mode, whether it has D or F, whether it has M or, or C, or, or I don't think we use any of the atomics, uh, so I don't think that one's relevant, but I compile it for every single one of those combinations that that the, uh, that the um, Freedom, S, Freedom, ESD, Freedom Tools supports. I compile it for every single one of those. Um, and I think I'll be able, able to actually run, test every single combination of those uh, with the test suite. So I'll actually able to be able to test every single version of every file that I compile uh, for RISC-V, which will be kind of nice. Uh, so here's the little hello world that example that I uh, promised you. Here's the, here's the actual source code that I built this morning. Um, it's a really big program. 
Um, if you've ever tried to get kind of your first program running on a piece of hardware and discovered just how many, how many things you had to learn on an embedded system, uh, this is the entire program other than the, C other than the library that is required uh, to get output uh, through semi-hosting on my, on my laptop under Quemu. Um, to compile it, you get to run just one little comp compilation program. Of course, it's not just CC like it used to be. Um, of course, you have to tell it what client, with the fact that you're using picolibc with the dash specs option. You have to tell it the architecture of the processor, uh, which in this case, we're going to be emulating this uh, RV32 IMAC uh, architecture with the ILP32 ABI. So you have to tell the compiler both of those, because uh, those aren't the defaults. Um, and then you have to give it a linker script. And I want to, uh, the linker script tells, uh, describes the memory that's going to be in my emulated, uh, emulated host. And then I have to pass the magic dash dash semi host. Um, I would love to be able to just say dash L semi host and have semi hosting be a library. But semi hosting has to come, has to be linked after libc because libc is going to be using calls in my semi hosting library. And so in the linker script, the linker script actually detects the dash dash semi host option and inserts dash L semi host after dash LC and LGCC in the link line so that you actually get the semi hosting um, implementations of read and write, open and close, and that kind of stuff. So the C library has access to those. So it's kind of like um, a part of the C library. It would be a part of the C library if, if it were always supported in platforms, but because it's not, and because you're going to want to replace those semi-hosting calls with real uh, targeted uh, 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 calls in your own environment, uh, the semi-hosting needed to be in a separate library. So it's got this magic flag, which is kind of kludgy, but it works. And I, I promised you a linker script. Here's the, here's the extent of the linker script. You can see that it's actually at the bottom. It's including the linker script that PicoLibc ships with. PicoLibc includes a linker script that lays out all of the, all of the read-only objects and all the code and all of the thread local storage and all the uh, uninitialized memory. Um, it lays all that, that out assuming uh, that you have a chunk of uh, read-only read memory to contain your program in constants and a, a chunk of read-write memory to contain everything else. If you have some more complicated system arrangement, um, you can use the, the linker script that's provided as an example of what needs to go in different places um, and construct your own linker script from that. Uh, this, as you can see, this just defines where the read-only memory is by specifying flash and flash size. And then it also specifies where the read-write memory is by specifying RAM and RAM size. It gives it a little stack, so it has some stack space. Uh, then I, one of the nice things about running a tiny embedded library is you don't need much stack space. Uh, the, uh, the standard I.O. In, in this particular call, the call stack is not very deep, um, and there aren't a lot of temporary variables in the stack, so it doesn't take very much, uh, very much of a frame uh, to do printf. Uh, so the resulting executable of that thing, which includes printf and all the other stuff necessary to run your program, is a whopping 880-some bytes. I can't even read it anymore. 886 bytes in, of ROM um, and, uh, and about... Uh, 34 bytes of RAM. So very, very small, uh, very, very small executable uh, out of that uh, to do hello world. And that actually actually works. So I can actually do a demo if we have some time uh, at the end here. OK, to run this, obviously, I want to run this under Quemu. Um, and I can do that on a single line. So I've added some stuff to Quemu to support the semi-hosting stuff on RISC-V. But it's the same semi-hosting stuff that already exists on ARM. So I haven't changed the, the uh, command line interface at all. Uh, you just have to specify the semi-hosting and what it's going to talk to. The semi-hosting I.O. is going to go to standard I.O. Um, and then you have to give it a, a long list of other arguments that specifies what kind of machine it is, uh, what kind of CPU it has, um, and where to send its output and input. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, and with that, I can actually do a little demo of what that looks like. Um, I can show you how, uh, how easy it is to compile and run. Let's see if I can make this work. It's probably got nothing on the screen anymore, does it? I think if I unplug and plug back in, it should ask me if I want to mirror now. Yes. We'll do this. Yes, no, maybe? I had a rocket before. That was pretty cool. We'll try a different button. 
Now I got nothing. Oh, there we go. Okay, I can't see my screen at all. Oh, there we go. Awesome. I can see it down here. This is, this is fine. Okay. So after you've ins the, the uh, when I build this, the library, um, uh, the built version, I can't compile stuff right out of that directly. Uh, so I installed the library on machine on my machine, and now I have just a very little simple, very simple C file that I showed you before. That yeah, looks familiar, doesn't it? And I can actually compile this, uh, and it's going to compile it, and it just runs that uh, the C compilation line and links it up. And now I can actually run this. Oops. And you can see it's got all the all the parameters to Quemu. When I started playing with Quemu, I was like, do people actually type? enormous command lines at Quemu, or do they put it in a config file or something? It's like, nope, it's all just shell scripts. Yeah, Quemu is kind of amazing. Uh, so I can just run it. And look, it says, hello world. And you can actually see the exit status. So the most important thing for me when I'm doing testing is it's nice to get the debug output. But the most important thing when you're doing testing is to get a correct return status from the test. So that when you're executing the test, you can actually tell the system, you can actually tell if the test ran to completion or not. So for instance, over here, um, let's see. Oops. Oops. All right. Let's see. So here it is running. Here's the uh, Pico libc test running on ARM. I'm actually running uh, running them under Quemu. Uh, the RISC-V I'm having some trouble with uh, getting the test to run reliably um, because of the some memory stuff. Uh, but you can see it actually runs the tests on every single architecture that I compiled the library for. But Quemu for ARM doesn't support all those architectures. It only supports a couple of architectures. So it's only able to run actually run the test on the architecture that's, uh, that, that, that Quemu supports for ARM. But RISC-V, because we have the option of supporting, of selecting the architecture that the chip is going to support, I can actually run the test on every single architecture that we compile for. Uh, so all of these, you're going to see that actually run to completion. So you can see here, I ran all 19 tests. Uh, one of those was the kind of the comprehensive library test that runs about 74,000 different tests. Uh, and they all run to completion. And so I actually have a, a library that I can, uh, that I can deliver uh, to my customers and uh, know that it's going to work. Uh, it doesn't use very much RAM or ROM. Uh, when I showed you the size of that executable, there's no allocation occurring at runtime. It doesn't use malloc at all. Uh, that's actually the total size of the program uh, when run on the chip. So with that, uh, we have time for a couple questions, or I suspect people are going to be ready to head out to dinner. Yeah, question? The question she had was for the license for PicoLibC. PicoLibC, most of the code for PicoLibC comes from Newlib, um, which has kind of a strange and convoluted license uh, description. But it turns out that all the code that we use is BSD licensed. So PicoLibC, I've removed all of the license, all of the code that has bizarre licenses. Um, and all of PicoLibC is now BSD licensed. So it's uh, freely, freely usable in any environment with no, no sharing required. Question? The question, the question this person had was, uh, what about Muscle or other, other, uh, other C libraries in the environment? Muscle is, is very much a, a Linux or Unix level C library. It's designed for much larger systems. It's definitely not targeting embedded systems. It might be interesting to, to, to take some of the Muscle mathematics or string functions that are highly optimized for our processor and adapt them into this environment. But the overall structure of Muscle is definitely targeting an, an, uh, a hosted environment running Linux or something. But yeah, it's got some good code in it, and we should probably probably use that. Question: the, Are you asking about the soft float support? 
So he's asking a question about the soft float support. Uh, the soft float support is part of uh, GCC. It's not part of the C library. So newlib and uh, picolib and, lib and glibc don't include soft float support. That's all included in the libgcc library. So we're using that same soft float support here. So there's no change in that. Um, if you have better soft float support that went into GCC or better soft float that you have natively that provides a GCC ABI, uh, then, then picolibc would be happy to use that. A uh, question about LLVM. Oh, did I try to compile this with LLVM? I have not yet, no. Uh, and it might be interesting to try that. Um, I'm not too concerned about performance of, the, of much of the C library here. Um, and GCC is generating pretty good code. Um, but it'll be interesting to compare the size and speed of that uh, on, on a particular platform. So I would love to try that, but I have not yet. Okay, with that, I think we've run out of questions and it's about time to, uh, to take a break and wait for the next presentation. Thank you very much for attending um, and I hope you have a good evening.